All right, another possible method of collecting the TDTR signal um, in, that is, does not involve the use of a biased photodiode um, is a balanced or an amplified photodetector. So there are, a lot, there are many examples of this. Um, I'll, I'll give one model number that I've used in my own lab. Um, there's the Thor Labs PDB um, uh, 450A. Um, and we can talk about why you might choose different models over other models. But the most important aspect of these type of detectors is that they have two laser inputs. So they're called balance photo detectors because um, the idea is that on one of the inputs, you send in your TDTR signal. So this is the probe beam returning from the sample that has both some DC intensity that's just like whatever the probe beam was before it hit your sample, but plus the temperature fluctuation associated with your sample. So let's call that input plus um, up here on the detector. And then for the other input, you send in some version of the laser beam before it went to your sample. So that signal will have the same DC intensity, or at least we'll adjust it so that it does. It'll have the same DC intensity, but it won't have the fluctuations associated with you know, the temperature induced fluctuations. So one of the lasers is basically laser plus signal, and the other laser is just the DC laser, the same DC laser intensity without the signal. So what these detectors do is they take the difference between those two things, and then, um, so after they take the difference, then the only thing that should be left in an ideal scenario is your signal. Um, and then because that's a very small number and it doesn't have any DC background on it, you can amplify the crap out of it. Um, and uh, you can amplify it quite a bit and uh, basically using a trans impedance amplifier and basically you can take your final signal f directly from this um, this amplified photodiode signal and send it directly to your lock-in amplifier. It's got a lot of good things going for it. Um, so this thing, um, you know, basically rejects a lot of noise actually, in, in addition to just giving you your signal and collecting your signal, what it's going to do for you is reject your probe laser noise. Um, that's because whatever noise, so imagine that like the intensity of your probe beam has some noise in it before it ever gets to the sample. Um, and so whatever, whatever the variation in the laser intensity is with time, um, that'll be experienced on both inputs um, if, you, if you sort of design your system well. And so you know, if that happens, then because you're taking the difference between the two signals, you'll actually get what's called common mode rejection. If the two si signals have the same noise in them, then the noise actually subtracts out and you get a much cleaner signal. Um, so in addition to collecting your signal, you're gonna get a lower noise signal as well. And then it, on top of that, it, it, these tend to be low noise amplifiers um, that are pretty close to the quantum limit. So you get a built-in amplifier. Um, and so, you know, this thing essentially eliminates the need or the desire for a pre-amplifier. Um, and typically you can you can really crank up the amplification on these things to levels that are that are good um, so you know on the systems that I've seen that operate the you know operate using these you can get some very low noise systems um, if you're thinking about doing things other than TDTR using the same sort of laser setup so like the um, MOC, the magneto optic Kerr effect sensing um, systems also use this type of photodiode and so this can be sort of a dual use item if you're thinking that you might um, operate your TDTR in multiple ways. The obvious disadvantage is that um, the setup is a little bit more complicated because you have to you basically have to focus two laser beams into uh, a very small amount of space, which makes the whole setup a little bit more complicated. Um, because you want the, the two DC signals, you know, if you, you want both the, the signal after the, the, uh, the sample and before the sample to have the same intensity, um, so that when you subtract the two, you get something pretty close to zero. In order for that to happen, you have to add some, some stuff in your system to make sure those two lasers powers match. Um, because by default they almost certainly won't exactly match. Um, they need to have approximately the same focus spot size, which can be a pain. 
and um, just in general, you, there's more alignment associated with it. Um, so there are some problems with this, um, but and and I should also say that um, the actual sensor itself is way more expensive than a biased photo detector. So like a, a biased photo detector like the DET 10A um, is about $200. Um, if you want to get one of these um, amplifiers, it's more like $2,000 by the time you're done building all the steering optics and everything. Um, so it is, it is more complicated and it's harder to align, but there are some really good things about it. Um, let me talk, talk a little bit more about um, how, like a, a possible setup for, um, do, for doing the, bio, the balanced photodiode. 